Hello there, this is DBT, and this Art of Rooms. And alright, it's time to continue playing some more Asphalt 8, and today we're gonna be testing this beauty. Oh yeah, the Mercedes-Benz CLK GTR. Now, you know that about a week ago, the new update to the game dropped, which is version, what, 7.0 or something like that? And that brought about 15 rebalances uh, of cars. And among them was a Lambo, and of course, one would think that DBT would go straight into the Lambo testing, right? But instead, I'm doing first a proper test of this car. And there's a good reason for it. In case you don't know, this is one of my absolute all-time favorite non-Lambo cars. And this is coming from the olden days when I played Need for Speed 3 Hot Pursuit. In fact, let me show you what it looked back then. Now, credit for this video goes to Classic Gaming Player. I'll leave the, a link to this video in the description. But check this out. Maybe you should lower this a little bit. So this is a straight up three, uh, Need for Speed two, 3 Hot Pursuit. One, this is a game go. from 1998 or something like that. And this was the first racing game that I played with actual cars. And in fact, this is the game that made me fall in love with the Lamborghini brand and specifically with the Lamborghini Diablo. But in that game was also this car, the Mercedes-Benz CLK GTR. And it was a car that you wouldn't lock. So you had to work for it, you know? And it was like a, not necessarily secret, but yeah, unlocking it was a thing. So whenever you earned it, you felt like, oh my God, amazing. And most of the cars in that game are very street cars, while this is a race car. And I suppose that even back then, I was kind of becoming a big fan of the ginormous wings and all of that. So I really, really, really like this car. In fact, when I was a kid, I was also trying to find a Hot Wheels um, diecast for it. I could never find it. I only got it like a year ago or so. But yeah, I really, really, really fell in love with this car in this game. And for that, it occupies a very special place in my heart because it was one of my first car loves ever. So now this is actually not the exact same model that you see in asphalt. You can see that the wing, you see this big, big racing wing over here. If, you, if we look at the one in asphalt, you can see that the wing here is different. It's not the same racing wing. And this is because the version of the car that is found in this game is the Strassen version. I don't know how to pronounce it, it's German. It's a street version of the car. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about it, but how about we just jump into some multiplayer and test it because I'm dying to really see how this thing performs. Of course, I'm going into classic season. You can see that I have 90 races so far. Oh man, this, this has been a complicated season, I'll tell you. Um, if you watch the streams, you would know. Why am I going here? Um, you will know that I had a lot of troubles getting into a lead league, but we're there, so we're able to start losing races and not worry too much. All right, so let's jump into it and see what we get. So, like I said, the version in this game is a street version, and that is because this car used to compete in the GT1 series of races. Yeah. And that required cars to be homologated, meaning that there had to be for, for the race ver track or rather the, the track version of the car there also needed to be a street version of it kind of like the case uh, for example with the Lamborghini Super Trofeo Mologato where there is the STO which is the street version and the Super Trofeo Evo whatever. oh I'm sorry but I didn't mean to knock you down uh, the Super Trofeo Evo which is a race version but anyway so yeah this is street version of that car and this car is actually very 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 iconic because it is said that this is the car that killed the gt1 series in the 90s because it was such an incredibly powerful car that just obliterated the competition now this car used to compete with other two very very big and iconic cars being the uh, mclaren f1 gtr and the porsche 911 uh, GT1 uh, The GT1 the, the Porsche 911 GT1 it's in this game although the F1 uh, That we have in this game is well, I guess it's also a street version So I suppose in a way we'll have we have the street version of the cars All right. Well, oh look at that. I beat a Cadillac interesting. In fact now that I think about it I beat I beat two Kings in a Unbalanced car. Let's leave it at that. I don't know if you can call that a King, but it's a weird one <laughs> So yeah, this, like I was saying, this car is indeed very iconic. Um, I think the very first big name in the GT1, at least that became such part of history, was the McLaren um, F1. Then uh, it was the Porsche 911 GT1 that ended up beating 
the oh Jesus Christ, that McLaren, and then came the Mercedes-Benz CLK GTR to completely destroy everybody and just kill the the competition because nobody wanted to compete against this beast. I believe that the version of GT1 had a, a V12. I believe that the Le Mans version of this car had a V6 instead, no, or V8. I'm not sure. I really don't know too much about the the Le Mans version. But yeah, the point is that this is an important car, and I know that some people think or consider this car to be very ugly, and look, I will say, it is definitely a very peculiar looking car, but you have to understand that they, they were purpose built. This is this car was primarily meant to be a racing car, and then they made a few uh, cars for the street, and that was that, just because it was the requirement of the homologation. Oh, <laughs> stolen. Oh, man. Did you see that steal? Jesus. All right, that's a second W. Look, even if I lose every other, uh, every single other race in this in this video, I'm happy. Look at that! I beat the three kings. Holy smokes! Porsche 718, Acura NSX GT3, and the BMW M4, and the Cadillac 16, which apparently has an, a completely broken um, acceleration. I don't know if it's true or not. Everybody says that it is, so I want to believe them. So, is it beauty challenged? Maybe. But you know that I like crazy looking cars. I like cars that look bonkers and this car absolutely does. And like I said, it was one of my first loves. While I absolutely adored the the Lamborghini Diablo because it looked so sleek and it was my first contact with Lamborghinis and whatnot. Um, it was also this car that I was like, holy smokes, it looks so strange. It looks so flat. It looks so interesting. And then again, again, oh, Jesus Christ. Okay, I'm gonna miss the left side, but it's okay. At least I didn't break. Um, it, it, with the big wing and all of that, and again, this doesn't have the, the ginormous wing found in the in the street in the racing version of this car, but it still it it preserves all that weird body shape. Act, shape. I think one of the other very noticeable differences between the race version and the street version is the position of the mirrors. You can see that this one has it over the wheels while the racing version had orange mirrors they were very orange and they were very much uh to the side of the of the window uh, can you call it a window i guess so but the curious thing about this car is that those windows don't even roll up or down they're just like stuck in place it, it has some vents on the a pillar over here but it you can roll up or roll down the the, the window it's it's completely just one piece and that's all there is all right, so what did we beat this time? BMW M4, I can only say GT3 Evo, a W12, but that's not fully upgraded. A Porsche 718 Cayman and a 48 Challenge. Oh, but this one disconnected. So that, I don't think that really counts. Man, did this car suddenly become really powerful? I don't know. Well, we wait here for the lobby to fill because it's taking a little bit. I mean, it would it would be fitting, right? That this car was ridiculously powerful because the real life version was ridiculously powerful. So hmm, that would work for me. Um, but yeah, so when I started playing Asphalt 8 many, many, many ages ago, I'm talking about when I was playing not seriously, you know, when I would install and uninstall uh, constantly, didn't have a proper account or anything, I was like trying to get this car. It was, uh, it was always sold for credits, if I remember correctly. So I could get this car, but again, I wasn't playing multiplayer or anything, so I had no, no point of reference. All I know, knew is that it had this car, and I love the idea of being able to drive this car again. Because remember, the Need for Speed game I played in the late 90s or very early 2000s, and Asphalt 8 came out in the early-ish uh, 2010s. So we're talking about it for over 10 years of difference. So of course, thinking about that car that I used to play with in that other game like 10 years prior or something, like that yeah it, it brought a lot of, of memory so i wanted to play it but the reality is that once uh what was it two three years ago when i started playing this game more seriously and i decided to get the car again and upgrade it and all i realized that it was a bad car like for multiplayer it just doesn't perform but in the end i still wanted to get it just for the collection value and not too long ago i decided to pro it once i realized that Game Love was going to be buffing every single car now i upgraded this i don't know when it has it been three four five months ago i don't know but i did pro it with the idea that one day this thing would get rebalanced and don't get me wrong i wasn't expecting it to be an incredibly powerful car at least i was expecting for it to be in this bracket and the reason why i wanted to be in this bracket is because the natural competition to this car the porsche 911 gt1 it's also in this bracket so i'm like yeah it has to be in the same bracket at the very least i would not accept 
being in that lower bracket. But yeah, I wasn't even expecting it to be a great car or anything. But in the end, I don't, I don't care. As I've said a bunch of times, these rebalances for the most part tend to be good for the cars. Even if the car doesn't become a king, at least it becomes somewhat competitive where it, where it wasn't before, you know? So, oh boy. Hold on. Oh no, I thought so well. Ah, damn it. I was looking for a sharp turn over there and maybe pass this guy, but all right. I can take that second place. So yeah, I, I, I was really surprised. Um, well, not really surprised. I was pleasantly confirming what am I trying to say? I was pleasantly... It's not a surprise. I was pleased to know that it was going to be put in this bracket. That's what I was trying to say. Jesus Christ, words, DVT, words. All right, the Cadillac did beat me this time, but we beat a 4 8 Challenge Evo, NSX, Club Sport, uh, the W12. This one is fully upgraded and another M4. I'm telling you, I think this car is pretty good. So yeah, being put in this bracket, it's good. And now discovering that the performance seems to be pretty good. Now, I'm not gonna say that it's a king killer. I'm not saying that this is the next king car in the game, uh, in this bracket. Maybe I'm just looking at it. Maybe the people that I'm racing against are not necessarily like super, super, super experienced in the game or they're having a bad day like I had for this entire week. Um, but so far it's doing all right and that is more than enough in my opinion. Like I said, Many of these rebalances, so long as the cars become somewhat competitive, I'm happy for it. And there's a bunch of cars that, well, several cars also in this update uh, that I'm interested. Like I mentioned at the very beginning of the video, the, I still want to do the test, obviously, of the, um, of the Lamborghini. Yeah, the Cadillac just out accelerates everybody. That's for sure. Now, what I hear is that it doesn't turn. So maybe this is where my car can get something going. Come on, come on, come on. Hold up, hold up. Can we keep this first place? Again, the acceleration of the other car. And apparently the nitro duration is also very, very strong on that car. But this, by the way, this handles pretty good. The handling is all right. It's not like handicapped or anything. Handles good, drifts all right too. And I wouldn't even say it drifts good. I mean, not amazingly sharp or anything, but absolutely very, very usable. Oh man, the, the game is lagging. Okay, we did it. Oh yeah, baby! Oh, we just won in the land of Mercedes in Germany. Look at that. Beautiful, beautiful. Man, again, I either I'm locking out over here or this car really has become very strong, which is a surprise and which is good news for a lot of people because it's a credit car. Okay, Cadillac, NSX, Cayman, and Challenge Evo. Uh, this, I wouldn't say it's a king. I don't think I've ever noticed the 48 Challenge Evo being a king of this bracket, but bad it isn't, so there's that. If you're enjoying this video and you have been watching up to this point, why don't you hit the like button if you haven't already? That would help the video. And also tell me in the comments if you think this is a good looking or ugly looking car. I, I can take whatever opinion, it's fine. I understand some people think it's ugly. I would say it is peculiar looking. I, I, was it the Carfection channel, I think, that they described this car as being the ultimate caricature of a Mercedes. It's like shrunken in some places, heavily distended in others. Yeah, it's, it's crazy looking and I love it for it. I mean, is it not clear by now that, oh Jesus, that was so close for me to wreck, that DBT loves cars that look absolutely bonkers. And if they're racing cars that look bonkers, it's even better. That's why I think I always loved the Veneno once I laid my eyes on it. Because even though it's not a race car, the Veneno is a road car, it has all the shapes of a race car. At least of a Lamborghini race car. The ginormous, bit, the ginormous wing with the metal fin that nowadays has become quite pre prevalent in cars that are for track use. Um, all the air and all of that. Like I always said, you can kind of see a lot of the Veneno uh, shapes in the Essenza SCV-12 which is a track-only Lamborghini. And the fact that they look similar does tell me indeed that, well, the principles were the same and the Veneno had a, a big racing look to it. And that's why I like it. And I think that's why in general I really like, I mean, I don't know if I like racing cars because of the big wing or I like big wings of, because of racing cars. Either way, they look absolutely gorgeous. And we got another W over here against the Cadillac. 718, 488, 488, 718, and an NSX. Oh, but this one is gonna be, all right, fine. Fine. Oh, what a beauty of a car. 
Okay, Sector A time. This is gonna be peculiar. Uh, that that kind of like is gonna do great at the start because it's a long, long straight. So of course it's gonna do great. It's only three people. What? They started a race with three players. Wow, surprising. I guess there were more in the lobby, but they disconnected before or something. Cause normally the lobbies don't start on. Oh come on, dude! Really? She says. He just pushed me. Um, probably because he couldn't steer. But yeah, I, I think the minimum amount, amount of players for a lobby to start someone wreck was it the Cadillac. It's four players. Yeah, the Cadillac wrecked. So it's just a Porsche and my Mercedes. All right, so it'll come down to if I can do this turn properly, which I normally mess up, so. Oh. Nice! <laughs> Look at that! Oh man, this car is making me proud. I wanna cry. It, I really... It's very difficult for me to explain to you what this car means to me. I know it might sound like a bit... Oh my god, here, here goes DBT with his exaggerations, but... It's... um. It's, it's, it's difficult. Again, remember, I am an old man. I'm not as young as a lot of you guys, although I know there's some older people watching these videos, but hey, maybe you can relate with me. The first game that introduces you to a genre that you fall in love with becomes a massive deal to you. For example, when it comes to first-person shooters, it was Quake and Doom, again, in the late 90s when I actually played them. And they became such a big thing to me. They imprinted on me so much that to this day I still play them both. And they're amongst my favorite games ever. So the first racing game that really got me A, into racing, and B, into certain cars, of course it would make a big impression, both the game and the cars that got imprinted on me. And that, that's, I mean, I, I think that explains very clearly as to why in spite of maybe the Lamborghini Diablo not being the flashiest Lambo nowadays, and maybe even a bit subdu subdued when you compare it to something like the Countach before, or the Murcielago after, a, a lot of people don't love the Diablo, but I love it because it made such an impression when I was young and I started playing racing games, and it's the exact same situation with this car, because those were my two favorite cars in that game, and I tell you, I play that game a lot. In fact, I made a couple of videos, or at least one video with that game. I plan to do some more just from time to time, just to revisit it. But that game, Need for Speed 3 Hot Pursuit, it, it means so much to me, because obviously, can you tell in this channel that I kind of like a lot racing games? I mean, can you? <laughs> so yeah, of course, I was that, that game has a special place in my heart, and those two cars have a special place in my heart. And I really haven't played many games where this car is available because um, this car nowadays is not featured in a lot of places. It is in Forza Horizon 5, but I honestly haven't played much with it just yet. Uh, but again, knowing that this car one of the, was one of the reasons why I wanted to play Asphalt 8 long, 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 long time ago. And now that I play Asphalt, Asphalt 8 so much more, being able to finally, finally, and for the first time, use this car in multiplayer and honestly, even if it wasn't an amazing car, so long as it was competitive enough, even if I was getting third places instead of first, I would still be so happy to be able to finally use this car. But the fact that it's outperforming all of my expectations absolutely is insane to me, and I'm really, really happy for it. Uh, now, is this car broken? I don't know. Maybe, because I've been getting W's, and DBT doesn't normally get W's. But... It's still quite quite the situation. Again, beating the Cadillac, GT3, a BMW M4, Cayman, and a 488. Man. Oh, man. What can I say? So, I have queued up for the race, but I decided to change the color of this just to show you what colors are available. To me, the silver is the most iconic. That's the very Mercedes-Benz uh, color, you know, and I kind of like it a lot like that. But it's also uh, some of the colors there's your red some blue green orange yellow this dual color thingy and another dual dual color now it does have a bunch of of liveries that you can apply 
the the classic lines and you know this one actually looks kind of interesting normally i don't like black cars and it this seems like a boring decal but I actually kind of like it a little bit um but there is a couple that i really like one of them being this one although it's a bit too dark it still looks so damn classy but the one that i actually want to bring it's this one although let me show you the rest of the decals just so that you know what's out there for the car I don't know why an American flag on a German car, but okay. But I think this is the best combination because you got the, the bluish tone. And then you put this other dual tone and you get a lot of colors in this car. So let's try it and see if this color brings me, continues uh, bringing me luck. And as I've said a bunch of times, I normally like using cars that I like as opposed to using kings. But when you get a king that you like, man, that's, that's a... That's an absolute W. Now, again, I'm not gonna say that this is definitely a king or it isn't, I don't know. Uh, like I said, there's also uh, the very real possibility that I've just been getting very lucky with the races and being matched against people who are not super experienced or whatever, you know? It's also a possibility. I'm not gonna say that, yeah, this is an absolute king. What I will say, however, is that the performance is very good considering that this is a credit card. So if you're in the market for a Class B 1860 car that is for credits, I think this is a fantastic one. And honestly, I wouldn't mind seeing more Mercedes-Benz CLK GTRs out there. Like I said, such an iconic car, both in its history or his historic value, I suppose. And also in my personal, my personal love and experience and whatnot. And yeah, I really wouldn't complain. All right, all right, let's not mess this one up. Oh yeah, beautiful, beautiful machine. Now, I don't even remember, is it an AMG engine that this car has? I think so. I don't remember that the, that the, this model and the, and the LM, like I said earlier, they do have different um, amount of cylinders, but I don't quite know much about that. Uh, 718 Cayman, the 650S, Oh, interesting. I hadn't raced against this. The 4A Challenge, Evo, and a 718. Cool. So, yeah, I think that is basically my, my general thoughts on this car as it stands. It seems to be a pretty good car. Can't really say if it's king level or not, but it absolutely it's a great one. And being sold for credits, obviously the challenge now is upgrading it because of how expensive the cars are. How much is it a Class B at 1680 to upgrade? Like... 8 million something? I don't even know. It's a lot of resources that you gotta spend. Let me think. It's it's 200,000, if I remember correctly, per upgrade. So that would mean 2 million per 10. So yeah, 8 million to upgrade it. 8 million fusion coins plus all, all the credits that you need to convert, the wild cards and all of that. But hey, at least the car you can get it, you can buy it for cheap. It's like 900,000 credits or something. I mean, I say cheap, I know it's not super cheap. But, you know, it could be a million and a half token, so... Oh, rip! Oh, but... Also, being an old car, this isn't a world climber, and I love it. I, I find so annoying how newer cars are world climbers. Then again, I think the only world climbers are in Class S, or... Hey guys, do you know if there's world climbers in anything that isn't Class S? I think that's where I've seen them, but nowadays it's such a big concern like, hey, is my car going to be wall climbing or not? Well, at least this one isn't. Oh, okay. What was that jump? I don't know, but we still got another W. What a beautiful car. What a beautiful experience and what a, what a great experience to come back to this car finally after so many years after I've been wanting to play with it in this game in multiplayer and just for it to be competitive. Again, I don't care if it's a king or not. All I wanted is to be competitive. And that is why I'm so up in in in, in favor of the rebalances because while some cars do get a little bit screwed, the vast majority seem to do all right. So that is all right. You can win them all, but man, I'm so happy about this one. But that's gonna do it for this video. You know what to do. Hit the like button and all of that good stuff. Subscribe if you haven't. Also check these videos that YouTube wants you to see because they are about cars. So yes, watch them. Well, that's all for now. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Take care and stay safe. Bye-bye.